Hello, welcome back. This is part three in a series of how to install GRP roofing system from Composite Roof Supplies. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at bandaging and taping the joints between the OSB and the trims. And we're also going to look at how to install the chop strand matting itself. Let's have a look. So the first thing we're going to do with our bandage is roll it out completely dry and cut all the individual pieces to size. This is going to make the insulation so much easier so you're not wasting time cutting the mesh. Ensure you know which piece is going where. Okay, so once all our bandage is cut to size, you can put that to one side and now we're going to cut the chop strand mat into its pieces. Okay, so what we first need to do again is work out how many full rolls of chop strand matting we can put across the roof surface, making sure we allow for a five centimeter overlap. Then you're just simply gonna roll out the matting and cut the required amount that you need. Once you've done the full pieces, you can then loosely lay them out and calculate how much you need to complete the roof surface cutting the chop strand matting to the sizes required. Okay, so once we've cut down all our chop strand matting, there's a very, very important step that we need to do. Post cutting, we're gonna have these clean, sharp edges. This is not good, let me show you. So, if you leave your sharp cut edges and you overlap them, what you're gonna end up with is a really, really harsh line on your finish because obviously, essentially, you've got double thickness in that location. So what you need to do is you're gonna fray and feather the edges so they look like this. What they will then do is mesh together really nicely and hopefully give you as seamless as possible um, finished result. That's really, really easy to do. All you're gonna do is with your fingers, you're just gonna completely rub the edges. And there you go, you've now got a nice messy side to mesh together more effectively. So take a look at that, you can already see that step has pretty much disappeared. So before we get to mixing, we're gonna cover some very important steps from how to mix correctly to top tips. Okay, so mixing the resin with the catalyst. Now, the catalyst is added into a percentage ratio of how much resin you use. Now that, you can think that might sound a little confusing, but actually, there's a really good table on the bottle to help you. So, we're gonna calculate everything by one kilo of resin. So, for this example, we're going to mix one kilo. So, now, now we know how much resin we wanna mix, we need to know the temperature, the ambient air temperature because there's different percentages depending on how hot or cold it is. Because the hotter it is, the faster your resin will cure, so you want less catalyst. The colder it is, the slower your resin is gonna cure, so you need more catalyst. So, if you are between 27 and 30 degrees, you can add 1% catalyst. Now, what does that mean? If you move down on the table, it means you want 10 mil of catalyst per one kilo of resin. If you are 19 to 26 degrees, you're going to want 2%, which moving down is 20 mil of catalyst per one kilo of resin. And then moving across 2 to 18 degrees, you're going to need 3% of catalyst, which is 30 millimeters of catalyst. Now, you've got those temperature zones it is not recommended to work outside of those temperature zones. As the resin cures so fast, it's recommended to do your mixes in batches. Now, I found a really, really handy way of doing this was to have one measuring bucket and then some mixing buckets. So what I mean by that was I operated in five kilos of resin at a time. So what I did was I poured five liters of resin 
into the bucket, measuring with scales. And then I simply drew a line on the bucket so I knew where five kilos of resin was in that one specific bucket. I then poured that bucket into a mixing bucket where I added my catalyst and then moved off to my area. This bucket was then used to refill up to the point, up to the line, ready for the next batch. What that will do is again, save you time measuring out resin. You can just filter the line and you know that's five kilos. And because of my temperature, I was at a 3% um, catalyst, which meant I was gonna add 30 mil of catalyst five times. If you really want to, to help with speed and process is your five kilos of resin, you can put that into multiple different buckets. So I actually had two different mixing buckets on the go at the same time. So each of those buckets had five kilos of resin in them up on the roof with my catalyst. So when I'd finished one bucket, I could literally pour the catalyst straight into the next bucket and mix up there on the roof without having to measure out any resin. So my first mix was actually a two kilo mix and that was specifically for installing my bandages. So I finished mixing up on the roof. That was obviously to ensure that I wasn't wasting too much time mixing out the way. So what we need to do is dip the roller into the resin and then we're gonna first apply resin down onto the area that we're gonna apply the bandage. Then roll out the bandage over the top of that resin. Then put more resin on top of that bandage to help stick it down. You're then gonna repeat that process throughout. And you should be making sure to overlap where any bandage meets other bandage. You can go back and reapply extra resin on areas that still look dry. When the bandage starts to look a little clear, what you're gonna do is use your consolidation roller to roll over the top of that surface. What this is gonna do is push out any excess resin or air bubbles to make that finish again as smooth as possible. And there you have it. You're just going to repeat that same process over all the joints that you need to bandage. Very, very simple. And look, now it's curing, it's gone clear. There's no white spots, which means there was enough resin applied on all the areas. Now that's done, we can move on to our main chop strand matting. The process is exactly the same. You're going to put your resin down onto the deck roll out your matting over the top, then reapply more resin over the top. Remembering our second layer, we're gonna overlap five centimeters onto the first. So I started at the drip trim, so then all my overlaps were then going downhill. I installed the matting all the way up to the curve in the trims. This was to make sure that I covered over all the clout nails. You don't need to go up and round the trim. Just recommended to go up to the curve. I think laminating the corners is the trickiest part of the whole process. So you're gonna need a brush and some resin for this. You're gonna brush on resin in the area that you're gonna laminate the corner. You're then gonna get a piece of your chop strand matting and lay it over the face. You're then going to cut relief points in the, in the mat so you can fold it over in the right places. You're then going to get your resin and apply resin to the top. You're probably going to need to get your hands real dirt here, holding parts of it down in place while you apply the resin. Folding over around all the edges and joints. Doesn't matter if it's a little messy at this stage because you can sand this as much as you want to get it to the right shape. Once everything is cured, it's going to look something like this. So there you have it. It's as simple as that to get your main chop strand mat down onto your roofing system. All we've got to do now is wait for that to fully cure, then we're going to sand it down hard to get off all the little sticky up fiberglass bits, um, and then we're going to top coat. 
that's exactly what the next and last video is. See you there.